Hey, hey, welcome. I'm Jamie Glowacki, and you are listening to Oh Crap. I love my kids, but holy fuck. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F bomb a lot. So, hey, welcome to my very first episode. This is called Who the Hell Am I and Why Do I Think I Know So Much About Parenting? I just want to give you an intro about myself in case you are unfamiliar with my work. I'm the author of Oh Crap Potty Training, and I am the author of the soon-to-be-released Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. This podcast is going to focus on the bridge from two years old to three, four, and five-year-olds. So I've worked with this age group for 20-plus years as a social worker and as a professional potty trainer. And I have found throughout my work that there is just so much confusion with this age. Yes, this is a very dramatic age. This is a very difficult age. But I find that a lot of parents are really confused as to what's happening developmentally. I think we're expecting far too much, far too much academically. We're expecting far too much developmentally. And we're not expecting enough with life skills and our children's capability. And what that results in is even crappier behavior. This age is crappy. (laughs) There's just kind of no getting around it. One of my favorite expressions is three-nager. And I know it's it's a, a controversial term. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't like it because, you know, it has this bad connotation like teenagers. But I want to preface all of this with I think teenagers are freaking awesome. I have a son who's 12 and a half on the cusp of teenagehood. And we hang out with kids from, I'd say, age 11 to 17. And they are the most energetic, coolest, awesome kids I've ever known. It's such a fun age. Now, we could look at three-year-olds like this, right? (laughs) Now, the reason I love the term three-nager is because a very similar process is going on with your three-year-old, three, four, and five, really, yeah, and teenagers. And that is the main point is individuation. Individuation is a psychological process by which your child figures out they are their own person. So the gap from two to three years old is when all of this starts to happen. And then you have three, four, and five-year-olds, right? Same thing with your 13-year-old. These ages are trying to figure out who they are without you. And in our toddlers, what you have to remember is before individuation hits, your kid actually thinks you guys are the same person. So like when they bonk their heads, they think you feel the pain. So at this individuation stage, what happens is they realize, oh my God, holy crap, I'm my own person. I can say no, right? That's what makes it so fun and awesome, but also so frustrating. You know, if you have a three-year-old, you are very familiar with the the age of no. They have free will and choice, right? And I see this just all over the internet because this is my job and I follow it. What happens is parents are like, what are the terrible twos? I I didn't have the terrible twos. It's three. Three is awful. And I can speak to my own parenting at two. I got super cocky, man. I was like, I got this parenting thing, you know, hopping on one foot with my eyes closed. And then three, oh my God, the devil himself moved into my house. So what I want to give you guys is a bunch of tools to help mitigate that crappy behavior. I want to preface all of this by saying, if you know my potty training work, you know this. You are the expert of your child. I am an expert because I've done work with thousands of families over the last 10 years. It's been amazing. And I have tips and tricks and I can see things because I'm not in the emotional mud that you guys are in, right? But no one will ever know your child better than you. And I say this because so many parents you know, reach out for an expert and want to follow an expert letter by letter. And the problem is it's not accounting for the child in front of you. Yeah. I want to open up your intuition and give you ideas to extrapolate so that you can, you can really turn on a dime no matter what happens with your child. I'm really sort of against this, like scripted answers to, to problems. Let me just preface all of my, my work with who I am personally and what what you'll be experiencing, I guess, in this podcast, right? I am very sassy. I do swear. I've created a podcast because I can't swear as much as I want on Facebook. And <laughs> I mean, no disrespect. It's who I am. And I'm, I'm very, very passionate about my work. 
I have the deepest respect for children. I have the deepest respect for childhood and for the process you're going through in trying to improve your parenting. And so please don't take any of my irreverence as disrespect. One of the bases that I do my work on is from Kim John Payne, a parenting expert that I love. Uh, his book is Simplicity Parenting, and I, I always recommend that book in addition to my own. <laughs> he has this core premise that the years of zero to six are govern, six to 12 is guide, six to 12 is garden, I'm sorry, and 12 to 18 is guide. So you want to govern, garden, and guide. And what I see all the time happening is that parents of zero to six-year-olds are really trying to guide. We're giving far too much choice. We're expecting far too much developmentally. Our children at this age are not ready to be guided. They need to be governed. And there's a whole lot of crap and shit attached to that word, right? But you want to be firm. And so we're going to really explore throughout this whole podcast, all these episodes, we're going to explore how to do that in a loving, firm way. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be this crazy, power-hungry parent, but you do have to be the one in charge. And so we're going to explore how to do that because I also find that most parents kind of don't know how to do that. They think there's only like super mean parenting or loosey-goosey, too many choices, too many options. We have to remember developmentally, your child's frontal lobes are nowhere near developed, nor is their executive functioning, their limbic systems. All of these things make them very impulsive, very primal. And so we have to work with that brain. We can't work with an older brain. And I'm telling you guys right now, and I see this in my work. I see this in my community. I see this in my own parenting. If you govern and lay the groundwork in this zero to six years, the six to 12 is lovely. Gardening emotionally with your child is so fulfilling. And you won't have to have these fights and battles and consequences and punishments and all this craziness. We really want to parent from the inside out. So again, this, all my work, my new book and this podcast, all my work is about parenting in a whole brain, whole body approach. It's not, again, these scripts of what to say and what to do. This does not account for your child. We have to account for the child in front of you. Uh, another pitfall of parenting is trying to parent the child you wish you had instead of parenting the child in front of you. Your kid comes loaded with their own DNA, their own personality. Our children are not ours. They don't belong to us. It's our job to facilitate their growth. And so for me to give you a list of do's and don'ts, that would be unfair to the child in front of you. I want to also say that I can't give you every example. If I do a live stream on Facebook, oh my goodness, people, you know, what do you do in this situation? There's so many different ways and things behind a certain situation that unless I'm working with you privately, I can't give you exact things to do with your child. So again, this is about forming a foundation, right? And and you extrapolating. So I just want to be clear about that. I know a lot of people, even I was uh, pulling my email list about this podcast and, you know, what they, what you, the parents were looking for, how long it should be, these kinds of things. And a couple of people were like, I want exact strategies. I need to know how to handle this situation. I can give you some broad situations, of course, but I can't know everything about every single child out there. The other thing is, please bear in mind that all of my advice is for your average neurotypical child. I am familiar with many of the diagnoses out there, but this advice is for the neurotypical child. So if your child does have a diagnosis of some variety, please take everything I say, try it. But I'm sure you know as the parent, because you know your child best, that some of these things might not work for you. Let's move on. Let's move on to bad behavior in quotes, in capitals, bad behavior, shitty behavior, crappy behavior. A couple of things about that. Behavior is just behavior. So let's stop labeling it, okay? It's behavior and it's communication. We all behave in all kinds of ways, depending on the situation, depending on our reactions. When our little ones have loaded behavior, and you know, we, I guess we could say crappy behavior, it's communication. So let's look at it like that. Instead of this random thing is happening, happening in a random vacuum, let's start looking at it as though, holy shit, what is my kid trying to say? 
Remember, our little ones don't have language yet. They can't say their feelings very clearly. They're at black and white, good and bad, happy, sad. They don't have the nuances yet, right? So it's our job to sort of translate that and then get to the root of the problem. Behavior is always a symptom, you guys. It's never the disease. Behavior doesn't come out of a vacuum. There's something up, whether it's physical, emotional, developmentally, we're expecting too much, we're expecting too little, we're keeping them too tight down, we're not taking enough risks, we're not allowing them enough space. Those are the diseases, right? The behavior is the symptom. On that note, I do want to mention when we are talking to our children, please don't ever tell them that they are bad. It's vital that if we need to say the word bad or crappy or whatever we say in the moment, that it's not attached to the person, but it's attached to the behavior, right? So that's the, that's the kind of shit that causes self-esteem problems later in life. You're so bad. You're always so bad. That goes in on a core level and the children can take that to mean that they themselves are bad. Not only is that bad for them and their psyche and their developmental growth, but it also creates a situation that could be a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like, well, okay, if I'm a bad person, I might as well be bad all the way. So always, 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 if you find yourself needing to say, you know, oh, I don't like your bad behavior, make sure it is bad behavior, right? Not bad person. And we can always just call it behavior. I don't like your behavior right now, right? So... All of this is just an introduction. My goal is to help you get to the roots of those problems, right? Again, this is inside out. This is whole brain, whole body. There's so many peripheral things that contribute to our kids' behavior. And my goal is to mitigate the crappy behavior. Let's be really, really clear here, you guys, that, oh my God, I just totally lost my train of thought. Let's be really, really, really clear. Sorry, it's my first episode. Y'all are going to have to bear with me as I'm human and make mistakes. But I want to be very, very, very clear that the there is an emotional and development explosive growth right now. And I, I say this like ad nauseum in my new book, right, is we can't get rid of all the asshole behavior. Your kid is learning the way of the world, right? So there's going to be wonkiness. Their emotions are going to collide. They're going to you know, sometimes their brain is so ahead of their physical development that they they get frustrated, right? Like their brain wants to do something and their body can't do it. All of these things are so frustrating. They're learning socialized behavior. I always say this about hitting, right? People are like, don't hit, don't hit. Hitting is actually very effective. If your child wants a, a toy that another child has and they hit it out of their hand, Dude, there's nothing more effective than that, right? They get the thing they want. So it's our job. We can't, we, we can't just say like, oh, they, you know, hitting's wrong. Your kid's only been on the planet for three years. They don't have this socialized behavior that hitting's wrong. They have this primal behavior. I want the truck. I'm going to get the truck. However, I can get the truck. (laughs) So, so we have to remember that we have to remember how very new they are. And that so much growth is happening at this age that, of course, you're going to see shitty behavior. You're going to see asshole behavior because you have to kind of try on being an asshole to not to learn how to be not an asshole. Right. And I am really opposed to that, like that the memes and everything like, oh, you know, toddlers are such assholes. But in reality, of course, they can be. But we have to reframe it when we're going to correct them and and teach them, right? We have to reframe that as something else. All right. So we're going to mitigate crappy behavior, work from the inside out, this whole brain, whole body approach. And I hope I will make you laugh along the way. With that, you can always go to jamieglowacki.com. I offer parenting sessions. I have courses for potty training. If you guys need help, reach out jamieglowacki.com and take good care.